Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll guide you to which nation's ground vehicle tech tree you should pick if you're either just starting out or are looking to choose a new tech tree to research. I'll go over each nation's tech tree's overall vehicles, what their mainstay vehicles are, how good their premium vehicles are, how each nation generally plays slash what their tanks are best at, strengths and weaknesses of each nation's tech trees, and finally, what type of person should use which nation's vehicles. I'll go over some of the more notable individual vehicles in each nation's tech tree as well. In this video, I'll be dividing each nation's tanks by BR range, with low being reserved to 3.0, mid being 3.3 to 7.0, and high being 7.3 to top BR. I divide them like this because these are largely, though not entirely, how the different eras of tanks and tank tech, such as cannons, weapons, and armor, are divided in-game. Low BR ranges are typically either pre war designs or early World War II, whereas mid-BR are World War II designed slash improved tanks and some built in the immediate aftermath of the war, whereas the top BRs have mostly Cold War slash post-Cold War tanks. Again, these are loosely defined as the R3 in the Italian tech tree is currently 4.0 BR and was built, to my knowledge, in the 1970s. Also, there are some nations such as England and Sweden which benefit from Sabo rounds far earlier in the tank tech trees than other nations, thus giving them a technological advantage when it comes to shell types at low to mid BRs. I put a ton of work into this video, so if you want more content, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. It means the world to me. That said, let's get into the video. So to kick things off, let's start with the USA. Their general characteristics are as follows. They're well-rounded tanks with mostly good armor and firepower. Nothing exceptional, but not too many tanks have terrible flaws either. They're decently mobile, with the Hellcat and some of their light tanks being exceptionally mobile and good at capturing points. They've got lots of medium tanks, especially at mid-BR. The US lacks true heavy tanks until getting close to 7.0 BR. The US also has the T95 and T28, which are super heavy TDs. Their heavy tanks around this BR basically all look the same, but have different armor amounts and cannons that alter gameplay between each of them. The the US also has powerful open top tank destroyers at mid BR ranges that have turrets, which is something that other nations like Germany and Russia do not have. Top tier is, like most of the other parts of this tech tree, well balanced. Benefits from having APF SDS ammo on most tanks and some missile launching tanks as well. True top tier from the XM1 up to the top is well balanced, with a focus on speed and once you get the 120mm M256 cannon power as well. Shermans and other low to mid BR tanks are also oftentimes carrying stabilizers, which will allow you to fire accurately up to 24 kilometers per hour uh, while you're moving, which is a huge advantage when used properly. Up through mid-tier, the US also has great armor-piercing high-explosive ammo, which oftentimes exceeds armor pen values of the lesser solid shot AP. And finally, it has lots of light tanks compared to other countries. To put it succinctly, the role of the US tech tree is really just doing everything, because it does everything pretty decently, and nothing Nothing all too bad. Uh, its air has tons of close air support in both the regular tech tree and premium. Almost every fighter in the American aviation tech tree can be equipped with numerous bombs and some, such as the P-47s, can carry many bombs and rockets. Additionally, there are tons of attackers and light bombers, such as the A-4B, which is essentially a pure CAS, but can also take out enemy bases and aircraft when flying in air battles. And for the main state tanks for the U.S., you have the M-4 Shermans, the M M26 through the M46, which all play very similarly, being that the M46 is just an evolution from the M26. We have a ton of light tanks, which are also mainstay tanks for the US. And then finally, the Abrams variants. They are all good all-arounders. For premiums, it's just basically more of the same, just good overall tanks. Tanks like the T14 and T28, among others, are exceptions to this as they feature higher amounts of armor while sacrificing speed. It's a great premium tech tree to buy from, with the T14, XM1, T20, and two different Hellcats being among the best of those tanks. And now for the strengths and weaknesses of the US tech tree, and I'll start off with the strengths. As mentioned before, they have good, reliable all-arounders. They can flank, tank, of course, win angled properly, and spank enemies pretty well. They've got great ammo choices, the best close air support in-game at every BR, and also there's something for everyone in this tech tree. 
Now, while there are limited heavies, you can still play as a heavy. If you like fast vehicles, they're everywhere. If you like medium tanks, the Americans have among the best and most numerous medium tanks in-game. And light tanks are also pretty common with this tech tree and are very powerful and heavily armed. Additionally, the U.S. has stabilizers in abundance at low to mid BRs, which is almost entirely unique to the Americans, with few exceptions in other nations. Additionally, the quality of the stabilizer is much greater with the Americans Americans because you can go up to around 24 kilometers per hour before it stops working. They also have good but not great optics, which is especially useful for their World War II vehicles. And they also have 50 cals on most tanks. Now these absolutely annihilate in low BR matches and against unarmored opponents like AAs, the R3, and similar vehicles. And now for the weaknesses. American tanks have so many variants of the Sherman that BRs increase while cannon power simply does not. You'll see that M4s keep getting weak weaker and weaker until you get the much more powerful 76mm cannon. They also don't have a ton of heavies until around 7.0 BR, then it's almost all heavies. This limits how you can play at any given BR on the tank types available. Armor, while good, isn't particularly strong enough as well, unless, of course, you're using the M4A3 E2 Jumbo or other random tanks to stand up to most tanks beyond 4.3 BR, especially when fighting Panthers and Tigers. And finally, they have somewhat mediocre AA until you get the M163. And now for some of the notable tanks. Aside from the aforementioned mainstay tanks, the Hellcat and the XM1 are extremely good vehicles. And finally, who should choose the US? As you guessed it, anyone that likes a tank that can do it all. Are they great at any one thing? A few are. The T-95 is a great tank to, well, tank in, whereas the Locust is a great troll tank. And the Shermans, through the Abrams, are just great at being tanks. They're quick relative to their peers and have potent enough cannons with decent enough armor. American tanks are really just good all around. Now, is the US tank tech tree beginner friendly? Very, as it has many different tank types that will suit all play styles. You can play fast with the M18 and their light tanks. You can play overall good vehicles that have decent everything, such as the M4 and the M26 through M48 variants. Or you can play the heavy tank roll, even though these tanks are less common with the Americans as they are, for example, with the Germans. I'd give the US a 10 out of 10 for beginner friendliness. And finally, for the US, in which order would I say that you should start playing this tech tree? I'd say that this is one of the top three easier tech trees to get into, and as such, you should definitely make playing the US one of the first three tech trees that you jump into. So, that said, let's go to Germany. For Germany, their general characteristics are as follows. They have heavy armor and firepower. They might not utilize the largest guns in terms of shell width, but they are among the most accurate, highest velocity guns for any vehicle up until the Cold War. They've got decent mobility. Despite the size and weight of these vehicles, many of the 40 plus ton tanks, including the Panthers and Tigers, move as though they are actually 5 or 10 tons lighter than they really are. The Germans also have lots of TDs. The German lineup has tons of casemated TDs, meaning that they do not have turrets. These are typically lower to the ground, have better armor, and a more powerful cannon relative to the BR as opposed to tanks, which typically have turrets. Additionally, the Germans have lots of heavies and mediums. Panzers, Panthers, Tigers, and Leopards. Need I say more? And also, they have few light tanks beyond low BRs. Between 2.7 BR and 6.3, there are almost no light tanks. There are certainly vehicles that are relatively lightweight and or agile, but none that are truly light tanks. Not currently, at least. And for how they play, this tree is best for almost every type of mission, as every tank is capable in nearly all aspects of the game. Capturing points might not always be a strong suit for the Germans, unless of course you have a rare German light tank handy. And for close air support, whether it's the Stuka G-Series, HE-129, or ME-262A1U4, the Germans are largely going to be uniquely cannon-oriented until post-World War II vehicles arrive. And for some of the mainstay tanks, you guessed it, the Tigers 1 and 2, the various Panzers, the Panthers, and the Leopards. And for premiums, they are among the best in the game. They range from light tanks to alternate versions of the King Tiger and an upgunned Leopard A1A1. With the exception of maybe Russia, German premium tanks may be the best in-game.
For the strength of the German tech tree, they have mostly incredible cannons and armor at any BR. They also have arguably the best optics in game that make it easier to hit enemies, especially for World War II tanks. They've got very accurate cannons, awesome ammo, and despite their size, they can be quite mobile tanks, especially the Panther tanks, as mentioned before, of which are among the best tanks in War Thunder at any BR. There are also very few instances in which you will not be able to destroy your enemy. Even some of the World War II cannons slash ammo can pose a large threat to more modern tanks. They also have modifications to tracks which help with traction and track strength. Many German World War II tanks have also been equipped with a turret top anti-air MG. They've also got a very fleshed out tech tree. You won't have any BR gaps with Germany. And finally, they've got great SPAA vehicles, especially the Kugelblitz. For the weaknesses, some of the late World War II tanks can be a little sluggish, but are actually surprisingly fast considering their weight. Even the King Tiger is an agile beast, but will still be at a loss when compared to smaller contemporary tanks, such as the M26 and Centurion, of which can both defeat the King Tiger if they're played correctly. Because of all the Cold War tanks at 6.7 to 7.3 BR, the King Tiger tanks and other relatively high BR German World War II tanks lose some of their main advantages, such as armor. The King Tiger, of which would be nigh invulnerable to most World War II tanks from the front at a range, is now much easier to kill versus he FS and Sable rounds. This is doubly so if you're using the mouse. And before 2.3 BR, most German cannons can be a little mediocre with penetration stats and will oftentimes require the flanking of an opponent, especially when you're in an up tier. They rely too much on heat ammo at this BR for pen. And some notable tanks for the German tech tree are the RU-251, the Waffentrager, the Mouse, and the top tier Leopard 2 tanks. And now for who should play the German tanks. I'd say anyone who loves the craziness of German tanks of World War II. After all, that's why I played them first all those years ago, and would like to destroy enemies using iconic tanks like the Tigers, Panthers, and Panzers. If you like a large amount of survivability and a great cannon, these guys are for you. From 5.3 BR to around 6.7, and then again from about 9.7 to the top tier, German tanks are arguably the best tanks in game. Those BRs just so happen to have tons of people playing in them and feature some of the most famous tanks ever produced. And now the question on all of your minds, is Germany beginner friendly? I'd say it is, but mostly. Though they start out with tanks that are fairly similar to the other nations, they quickly go from light and medium tanks to medium and heavy tanks around 4.7 BR through around 7.0 BR, which is a huge chunk of the German tech tree. This alters their gameplay dramatically and makes it so that the Germans tend to be better for snipers and or people who value agility less than the do power. Of course, a medium tank that is also fairly heavy, like the Panther, has relatively good agility. But this is not typical of Germany for mid-BRs. Their tank destroyers also take some getting used to, but are very powerful, and, as with the other tanks around the mid-BRs, they're not all that agile, and this goes doubly so for their open-top tank destroyers. Aside from the lack of mobility, they are fairly straightforward, and I give them an 8 out of 10 for beginner friendliness but Germany is one of the best, if not the total best, tank trees in the game. And finally, where should you play Germany in so far as the other tank tech trees are concerned? In what order? Personally, I feel that this is a toss-up, but they have so many tanks in their tech tree that, despite not having many light tanks, they still have many tanks for most playstyles, so I'd say they're easily one of the top three tank tech trees that you should get into first. I personally did Germany first, had no issues, and I love their tech tree. They're excellent for people who really love the historical value of their tank tech tree, but again, all of the tech trees in all of the nations, for the most part, have great historical value that anyone can easily get into. And now for Russia, to top off the big three nations in War Thunder the U.S., Germany, and Russia. They are all-arounders like the U.S., except with typically better armor throughout most of the BRs. Not necessarily heavy armor, especially during World War II, but better due to angling. They typically have slower reload times and less crew than other nations, making them more vulnerable to crew kills. These tanks can brawl and, for the most part, are good in most situations. If you're using a properly angled T-34 or T-44, you may as well be invulnerable, at least against lesser skilled enemies. The T-34 is basically the Russian Sherman in that it can do a lot pretty decently, but doesn't excel in any one task. But unlike the American version of the Sherman, it has more than two cannon choices available, including a powerful 85mm. 
By the time it reaches this cannon, however, it will be facing higher BR opponents, which will make it more difficult to effectively use your armor as you may have used in lower BR matches. And aside from and including what I just mentioned, Russian tank general characteristics are that they have decent speed, they have pretty good BR placement, they're relatively lightweight for the amount of protection on their vehicles, and they have low crew size compared to other nations. The Russian tech tree is excellent for playing all sorts of roles through early Cold War tanks, but they quickly shift into tough to kill main battle tanks as you get higher into BRs, to a point at the cost of speed. For close air support, they are very good for the most part, but are more rocket based than the Americans. The IL-2s, IL-10, and SU-7 are very powerful close air support machines. Their regular fighters are about average when it comes to close air support duties, however. And for the Russian mainstay tanks, there are a ton of them. You have the T-34s, the IS tanks, the T-55, and the T-64 through the T-90. For premiums, the premium tanks are among the best in the game. Likely better than the Germans, but right up there either way. The T-72 AV Terms is ridiculously powerful, as are the Object 120, T-44-122, and T-34-100. And for the strengths of the Russians, they oftentimes have powerful cannons that tend to be of larger caliber with just decent penetration stats. Not always, of course, but that tends to be how it is until you get into more modern tanks. They're also early adopters of sloped armor and also heavier armor, meaning that, especially at low BRs or against untrained opponents, these tanks can be very difficult to kill from the front. They also have the KV-1 and the T-34, and oftentimes they are going to be the top tanks in a match if down tiered, specifically for the aforementioned armor reasons. And finally, they have tons of top tier tanks. If one of your top tier tanks dies, you can simply just jump into the next one, and it should be just as good. They're pretty much all good or great tanks at the top Russian tier. And for the weaknesses, they oftentimes have terrible reload speed on mid-BR tanks that have large cannons, such as the 122mm D25T cannon or the 152mm ML205 cannon. These both take over 25 seconds to reload with a lightly trained crew. Reload times do not match the quality of these cannons, meaning that you will oftentimes miss or bounce a shot and then have to wait the equivalent of an eternity before firing again. Also, heavy tanks before the T-72 can be quite sluggish and not maneuverable, though lighter tanks are very good in these categories. And, as mentioned before, they have low crew size limits, and it limits the survivability of these tanks dramatically. And finally, because Russians use slightly larger ammo, it means that their ammo racks are slightly easier to hit for the most part. Some notable Russian tanks are the T-72 AV Terms, the T-34-85, and the IT-1. And who should play the Russians? Anyone who might be less experienced and or wants an easier learning curve. It's not too much easier than other tech trees, nor is it necessarily a better tech tree. These tanks, however, are a bit more forgiving and are likely a little bit slower, uh, more heavily armored versions of American tanks. If you like playing one of these countries, you'll probably like playing the other. Now, this all said, is Russia beginner friendly? I'd say they very much are as the Russians have tons of medium tanks just like the Americans and this gives their tanks good overall attributes, making them easy to learn and easy to get into. I'd give the Russians, like the Americans, a 10 out of 10 for beginner friendliness. And finally, in which order should you play the Russian tank tech tree in comparison to the other tank tech trees already in game? I would say that this is definitely a top three, a first three tank tech tree that you want to play. This can be number one, uh, and then US number two, and Germany number three, or Germany number one, US two, Russia three. It doesn't really matter. They're all excellent tank tech trees to get in as your first tank tech tree, as they will have great vehicles, but I'd say Russia especially has no weak spots between Reserve BR and all the way up through the top modern tanks in game. They are an excellent tank tech tree to get to know and they will help you to get to know the game and have a great feel for the game uh, compared to almost every other tank tech tree currently in War Thunder. With the big three out of the way, let's get into England, which is almost kind of like a part of the big four if you want to consider it, being that's the fourth largest country in game in terms of vehicles. The general characteristics are as follows. They've got somewhat slow turret traverse, lots of solid shot AP, though they do have early access to Stabo ammo. Most British tanks are also fairly slow. They have to make their T in their tank after all, so you can't move too fast. 
They're also well armored when it comes to turret faces from around 3.0 BR to around 7.0 BR, with decent to good armor around the rest of their tanks. Again, this is just a general statement. The English also utilize faster firing cannons for the most part, and they are not always going to be the strongest until of course you reach the 17 and 20 pounders. These cannons absolutely revolutionize English tanks. The English also don't have a ton of very effective heavies. Churchills can be okay, but they're fairly slow. And finally, England has a ton of cruiser slash infantry tanks, which are largely unique to England. Cruisers tend to be fast and well armed with decent armor, whereas infantry tanks tend to be slightly less well armed, are slower, and have a good amount more armor. And for how England plays, they're best in a support slash tanky role. They can take a lot of damage well from the front, especially when it comes to World War II tanks, but until you get the Centurion, their ammo limits them. Once you have access to Sabo rounds, the British suddenly get far more powerful and can be more reliably on the offensive rather than the defensive. England is also one of the best close air support countries, as it has Tempest, Typhoons, a premium P-47, and the Thunderbolt Mark II, Mosquitoes, the Wyvern, the Jaguar, and more. All can carry large amounts of ordnance with a good mix of bombs and rockets. And for the English mainstay tanks, you have the Churchill, the Shermans, the Centurions, and the Challengers. And for premiums, English premium tanks are fairly good. The Ruocat 105, Centurion ARVE, and the Centurion Action X are all mainstays of upper BR fights and are very popular. Low to mid BR premiums tend to be either copies of regular tech tree vehicles or not that much different than is already available through the regular tech tree. And for the strengths of the English tech tree, they have access to early Sabo rounds, which leads to a very strong British presence in 6.0 plus BR matches. In addition, they're mostly well armored for World War II tanks. They also have a good variety of tanks where you can pick and choose your desired role. English tanks are easy to use and don't have a ton of cannon options between the tanks, which makes learning their characteristics far easier, especially being that the British cannons are fairly good. They are also fairly well fleshed out tech tree. Outside of the big three, the US, Russia, and Germany, England has the most tanks currently in game. For weaknesses of the English tech tree, most tanks until the modern era have fairly slow turret traverse rates, and even still in the modern era, they're not all that great compared to other similar and contemporary tanks. They also lose their edge with Sabo rounds beginning around 7.3 or so BR. Most of the English tanks are also not particularly fast and don't have a ton of armor to make up for this either, which makes them easier targets. In addition, their armor isn't even well angled, until of course post-World War II. Even the mouse has a higher top speed than the Churchill Mark 7. Additionally, they don't have a ton of dev support for current British tanks, uh, which means that many people at top tier are basically claiming that they're being outmatched by other tanks. For the notable tanks, we have the Centurion Mark 1, the Ruocat 105, and the Falcon. And finally, who should play England? People that want something a little different than the normal and people want a variety of extremes. The English have extremely well armored but slow tanks with the Churchills, and also have somewhat quick but lightly armored and sometimes poorly armed tanks. There's a little something here for everyone, but the learning curve is a tiny bit steeper with the British as compared to, say, the big three countries like the USA, Germany, and Russia. And now, is Great Britain beginner friendly? Though Great Britain is very beginner friendly, they aren't quite as easy to get into as the previously listed three nations. Now, this isn't to say that they're not an easy nation to get into, especially as they have numerous tanks in their own tech tree from the US tech tree, such as the Sherman and Achilles, the latter of which is otherwise known as the M10. This said, some tanks are egregiously slow, such as the Churchills and kind of the Archer depending on how you want to use it, but because it's kind of a backwards firing tank, I would still consider that to be egregiously slow which will be difficult to get used to for new players, which takes away some points in this category. Otherwise, between their generally good cannons, good frontal armor, and mostly average speed, I give Great Britain an 8 out of 10 for beginner friendliness. And finally, this said, I play Great Britain after using one of the previous three listed nations, as they are a little bit tougher to get used to, but even if you use them first, you should still be able to do well. So I'd say after the first three, but again, if you use them before the first three, you should still do pretty well. There's just a little bit more of a learning curve. And moving on to Japan, 
Their general characteristics are that they're lightly armored, and really just poorly armored in many cases. Uh, for example, no Japanese tanks have more than 75 millimeters of armor until you reach 6.0 BR, and even that is a premium tank. You need to hit 7.0 BR before you can buy a main tech tree vehicle that has more than 75 millimeters of armor. Japanese tanks can be penned by most cannons in most BRs with ease. They're also not fast, they're poorly armed, they've got boxy shapes so they ricochet fewer shots. They also don't have a ton of tanks in their tech tree, which leads to major BR gaps. And also there's a good amount of copy and paste from the American tech tree. And normally I start with a country's tech tree description with general characteristics of that tech tree. That was basically just weaknesses and I'll go over that in just a moment because the Japanese tech tree is pretty rough. So let's just go over some strengths for now for the Japanese. So some of their cannons are pretty okay with the good ones coming out after 3.3 BR. They also have premiums that are, though limited, pretty decent starting with the surprisingly great Chinu 2. And also half of the World War II part of the tech tree are basically meme tanks and are kind of funny so you can make videos about them making fun of them. And for the role of the Japanese, they are for the most part best in the support role as their armor is too weak to survive being at the front and they do again have decent cannons after 3.3 BR. And for close air support, they are pretty mediocre uh, for the most part, but some planes such as the D4Y3, J6K1, and most of their jets are actually pretty decent. It's just that they mostly either have fighters that can't carry more than a tiny load of bombs, or bombers that are very difficult to use in the close air support role. For their mainstay tanks, you have the Cheeto tanks and the tanks that start with ST. I know it's kind of vague, but it's kind of just how it is. Premiums, as mentioned before, are actually pretty solid. The Chinu 2 is great and the Hori prototype is also pretty good. The Type 74G isn't bad either, but is an outdated uh, tank for its BR. And also for notable tanks, you have the ST1 and the ST2 and the Chi Ri. So who should use the Japanese? And I'll just be honest here, again, the Japanese tech tree is pretty rough. It's a tough grind, but can be worth it as some of the tanks are genuinely great. This is one of the toughest learning curves in the game. I could see those who love the Pacific Theater or are huge fans of Japan as being those who will want to go for this tree. And to be honest, there are better tech trees out there. It's not Japan's fault, of course, because they are an island nation after all and don't need tanks like Russia does, but they do still have some really solid and rewarding vehicles. Just avoid buying the Rogo at all costs. Now, is Japan beginner friendly? Yes and no. On one hand, once you get the long 75mm cannon tanks starting around 3.3 BR, the Japanese tech tree can be dangerous. On the other hand, their tanks up to that point can be difficult to use and are considered, for lack of a better word, to be trashed by many players due to their total lack of armor, poor speed, and poor cannons. Unfortunately, these tanks are the first experience that you'll have with this tech tree, and you'll have to slog through them for a while before you get to the better tanks. Even still, those 75mm cannon tanks have paper-thin armor as well. So this tank tech tree is good for backline offensive duties or acting as TDs with turrets, staying behind cover and in concealment. Due to these factors, I'll have to give Japan a 4 out of 10 for beginner friendliness. They're not totally unplayable, but a large portion of Japan's early tech tree is almost objectively terrible. Their premiums, barring maybe the Chiha's short gun, don't help either, before you get to the Chinu too, that is. And finally, where should you play Japan? I'd play Japan maybe last when considering all other tech trees, unless, for whatever reason, you love their tanks from a historical standpoint and or want a challenge early on. If you get good with Japan, you should be good with nearly any tank in game. After Japan, let's go to China. And for their general characteristics, they have lots of medium tanks. They start to get native built tanks at high BRs. They have a lot of good all-arounders. Basically, they're just a hodgepodge of Russia and the US through about 8.0 BR with a little bit of Japan at low BRs. And they also have a great assortment of semi-native light tanks at mid to high BRs. For the role of the Chinese, they're great at almost anything. You can cap points, kill enemies, and take damage with ease depending on your choice of tank. Of course, this is because they have a lot of US and Russian tanks which are just great at anything, especially the T-34s and Shermans, so that kind of makes China the best of both worlds. And for close air support, it's much the same. It's actually quite amazing, as they have various P-47s and the IL-10, so you can choose which close air support beast you want to annihilate with. 
Even with jets, they're really good. Surprisingly, or maybe even unsurprisingly, China is one of the best countries for close air support in the game. For the Chinese mainstay tanks, they have a ton of T-34s and then the ZTZ tanks near the top of the tech tree. And for strengths, basically it's just all the same as the Russian and the US tanks, just mixed together. For weaknesses, much the same uh, with the strengths, except that top tier tanks currently lack a lot of ammo options, which is a fairly major weakness again in top tier. And for premiums, they're basically just tanks that are already in the regular tech tree for the Chinese. There's not really too much special about them except for the Type 69 2G, which is really just an upgun slash up armored Type 69. For notable vehicles, there really aren't any except for maybe the CM11 or PTZ89, but you don't see these often because few people get that far with China. And so who should play China? People who want a good mix of the US and Russia. Nothing is wrong with the Chinese tech tree. It's mostly unoriginal, but it also gives people the opportunity to use a T-34 and a Sherman in the same tech tree and the same lineup without needing to buy a premium. On top of that, it has excellent close air support. If you like a little of everything, this tech tree might be for you. Now, is China beginner friendly? This is a very beginner friendly tree, but largely because it combines the easy to use US and Russia tank tech trees. Although it has some mediocre Japanese tanks early on, you can more or less totally skip over them in order to get the more mainline tanks like the Shermans and the T-34s. In addition, there are some unique variants of these tanks in the Chinese tech tree, which adds a little bit more spice to the ground forces. All in all, I'd say that they're a 10 out of 10 for beginner friendliness. And finally, where should you play them in comparison to the other tech trees? Now, despite being beginner friendly, I'd consider playing China after you get into a few other tech trees first, simply because the Chinese tech tree is not too full yet. There are just simply not enough tanks for you to really get a full experience of a tech tree. This could be beneficial, however, if you're looking to get through a tech tree as quickly as possible and reach those main battle tanks. If this is the case, perhaps consider playing the Chinese first. Jumping into Italy, for their general characteristics, they are lightly armored, Fast, they've got a ton of wheeled vehicles, they've got advanced vehicles early in the tech tree, and they also have a good amount of familiar American tanks. For their role, Italy is excellent at capturing points and flanking. Their light armor limits their frontline effectiveness, but they are kings on urban maps with paved roads due to the amount of wheeled vehicles that they have. For their close air support, it's really good once you get into the mid-BR ranges. At top BR, the G91 R4 is great with its two Nord ATGM missiles, and Italy also greatly benefits from the F84 and SM92. For their mainstay tanks, you have the R3 and the Centauros, both of which are wheeled vehicles. For the strengths of the Italian tank tech tree, as mentioned before, they are very, very fast. They've also got decent cannons, especially on their tank destroyers. They've got good Sherman variants. And also they've got decently armored native tank designs, especially their tank destroyers. For weaknesses, they've got a lack of ammo options at low to mid BRs. Some of their main vehicles like the R3s can be easily destroyed by HMGs. They're also too reliant on wheeled vehicles, which means that they suffer tremendously when they're off-road. And finally, there are some large gaps in the tech tree in the mid BR range, despite there being a fair amount of vehicles in the tech tree overall. For the premiums of the Italians, they're pretty good. A large chunk of the vehicles are from other nations, but they're still solid performers. The Aubel 74 HVG, which is an event vehicle, and the OF40 are very good and are also quite speedy for what they are. For notable vehicles, we have the Soleri Sahariano and the Fiat 6614. The Fiat is an absolute terror around its BR. And finally, who should play Italian tanks? People who like speed and those who like playing wheeled vehicles should go with the Italians. The World War II vehicles are okay, but the post-World War II vehicles are really crazy, especially when considering the weapons and speed and also the lack of armor. It's basically like doing a drive-by in tanks. And now, for what everyone wants to know, is Italy beginner friendly? Surprisingly, yes. They're low-level medium tanks with special consideration given to the M13, M14, and M15, all leading into the P40 and then the Shermans, are all excellent. Despite having a deceivingly low amount of armor, they all absorb hits very well and can deal out devastating damage. Maybe it's because I'm familiar with the weak spots on most tanks, but even despite the mediocre armor pen, with some of these tanks in an up tier, it felt like it rarely ever mattered especially with the excellent APHE ammo. Add in their generally good agility and meme potential, 
you have a surprisingly good lineup for beginners. The only issue is the current black hole in BRs between about 5.0 and 6.3, where only one tank currently exists. With this in consideration, I give the Italians a solid 8.5 out of 10 for beginner friendliness. It just gets a little rough around that BR gap. That all said, I'd say you can easily play the Italians in whatever order you'd like. Again, I'd recommend playing any or all the big three nations first, but Italy could be played by nearly anyone. Their low-level tanks are just as competent as all other tanks around their BRs. If you want an answer that's not on the fence, I'd say to play these guys after you play Germany for a bit, just to shore up your Axis vehicles in War Thunder. And for France, let's get into the general characteristics of that tech tree. They have powerful cannons, although sometimes inaccurate. They've got few World War II era vehicles, for obvious reasons. Oscillating turrets, which is unique to French vehicles. They've got decent speed. They also have good armor and weird weak spots. And for the role that France plays, I'd say it's fairly interesting. So if you use a tank like the Char B1 Terror, you can be the tankiest tank in all of tank land and not die. If you use the AMX-13 though, you can scout, flank, and cap points very effectively. The French have a bit of everything for everyone until about modern times where they kind of start to fight alongside every other tank and they just kind of mesh in with, again, every other tank in the world. For close air support, they're pretty bad when it comes to native planes, but with the American planes, which there are plenty of in the French tech tree, like the F6F and AD4, they more than make up for it. The Narvel's also pretty good, but it's a premium, and jets like the Intendard, the Vautour, the Jaguar, and Super Mystere are great for air support especially when it comes to the amazing SNEB rockets. This said, the French mainstay tanks are the AMX-13, AMX-30, and M4 Sherman variants, especially those that are unique to France. For their strengths, they have fun, unique, and powerful variants of vehicles already in-game, such as the M4A4 SA-50. They also have an emphasis on auto-loading, which makes it so that you can salvo shots very quickly with certain tanks. The French also have tons of oscillating turrets, such as on the AMX-13 and the Samua SM, providing unique gameplay options which can make it difficult for enemies to find weak spots on more highly armored French tanks. They also have a great light tank line with the AMX-13s and some other various light tanks here and there. And finally, they have tanks in-game that offer good versatility and support many different playstyles. And now for the weaknesses of the French tank tech tree, their guns are surprisingly inaccurate. Also, their native cannons at low BRs, such as on the AMX-13 F11, are pretty rough. They mostly have poor penetration values, poor damage after penetration, and are very inaccurate, as just stated before. They also don't have a ton of tanks for low slash mid BR for obvious reasons. Cough, cough, World War II. At the time of the making of this video, the French have precisely zero tanks in the regular tank tech tree that sit between 3.7 and 4.7 BR, with the exception of a lone anti-air tank. This is a huge gap that makes it very difficult to use French tanks with much consistency around this BR range. After you hit 5.3 BR, there's another huge, nearly full BR gap, which makes it even more difficult to play French tanks in mid-BRs. In addition to this, low BR tanks are absolutely dreadful, with the exception of the Char B1s. However, don't let this dissuade you from playing French tanks. And finally, ammo options are bad and very limited until about 8.0 BR. They're almost exclusively solid shot AP unless using foreign tanks. This limits post pen damage tremendously. For premiums, the French have excellent premium tank options. Among them, the B1 Terror is one of the best tanks in game at any BR while the Samua SM and the AMX-30 Super are great in their own right at their own BRs. For notable vehicles, you have the Char 25T and the B1 Terror. And so who should play the French? I would say anyone looking to go off the beaten path. These tanks are unusual and offer many unique gameplay options. I personally find the French to be very fun, but they can oftentimes give you a feast or famine type game where you either do very well or terribly, and it's largely depending on if you get up tiered. I'd say in summation, they've got great penetration and good armor, all while being mostly mobile, but they have some gaps to fill in in their tech tree, which would then make them a complete tank tech tree. Now, is France beginner friendly? This is a bit of an odd one, as they have some unique mechanics to get used to, but nothing that's too much to really learn. Between their oscillating turrets and relatively common autoloaders, they are a bit unusual. What I mean is that the French have quite a few tanks, 
mostly starting in mid BRs and going through higher BRs, where you have a number of shells in an autoloader magazine that allow their tanks to fire faster than almost any other tank in game. But when you run out of the autoloaded ammo, your reload is ridiculously long. Add to this the fact that almost all native French tanks have only AP ammo with no explosive filler, and you kind of have an odd tech tree. When considering the introductory tanks for the French, such as the H39 and others, it is difficult to get into this tech tree and feel good about it right away. Once you hit mid BRs however and later the top tier, they become amazing. So for beginner friendliness I give them a 5 out of 10, but with the consideration that they become way easier and much more fun after 3.0 BR, with the exception of the B1 tear at around 2.3 as that is the French Godzilla. If you could skip to the mid BRs to start the French tech tree, I'd give them an 8 out of 10 in this category. And finally, I'd say to pick the French after you're fairly used to the concepts of tank warfare in War Thunder, especially after you've already gotten into high BRs with one or two of the big three nations, and maybe a few other nations as well. And for Sweden, the general characteristics are as follows. They are based largely on defensive doctrine, which shows in the design of the Stridsvaken 103 and also the Swedish TDs in-game. They've also got relatively light armor, unique tank designs, tons of turretless TDs, and they have generally fairly fast tanks, but they're not too agile, so they go fast in a straight line, but they don't really turn all so well. And for the role of Sweden, I'd say they play defense very effectively, as that's what their tanks were actually designed for in real life. But they can also be very powerful offensive tools, so long as you can stay at a distance from your enemy, especially if you don't have a turret. I wouldn't frontline these tanks unless, of course, using the Stridsvaken 121 through 122 models. And for close air support, I'd say it's decent with the Swedish. They'd be better if they had more options, but the A21, A3 is awesome, as are the T18, B1, and the B2. Jets are good too, especially the A32A Lansen, but it also falls prey to enemy fighters very easily. The Swedish mainstay tanks are the early Stridsvagen M series, which are basically low BR tanks, the Stridsvagen 103s, and they're also their various tank destroyers. Being that this isn't so much of a filled out tech tree, and I don't really think it will ever be so filled out, uh, these are really kind of their main options as of right now. And for the strength of the Swedish tank tech tree, they have extremely early access to stable rounds at low BRs, much earlier than the British do, which can pen nearly any tank in game with ease. They've also got top tier tanks which have ridiculously powerful ammo, high BR tanks that are very angular leading to loads of bounce shots. They're also awesome for playing defense especially at high BRs with the Stridsvagen 103 or really any of their TDs and also they have among the best light tanks in game at top tier. For weaknesses the Swedes can be a little difficult to use and learn especially the Stridsvagen 103. Their low tier tanks use basically the same cannon from reserve through 2.7 BR. They also have a low amount of tanks slash diversity in tanks throughout the majority of the tech tree. For the most part their tanks are also fairly lightly armed. Armored, and also they can be sometimes difficult to use on offense just due to the design of the tanks. I mean, just look at the Stridsvagen 103. It's a wedge for heaven's sake. The premiums of the Swedish tech tree are actually very good, especially the CV90105 TML, but are also limited insofar as choice is concerned. For notable vehicles, again, we don't really have too much choice, but it's the Stridsvagen 103 and also the USH. 405. I get my butt whooped by that tank all the time. And finally, who should play Sweden? People that like to play defense and who like the style of playing as a TD. This tank tree starts off like other trees, but quickly becomes more of an advanced tree and be difficult to use. It is very rewarding as I have been very successful with Stridsvagen 103 and other vehicles, but it can also be extremely difficult. Definitely worth it for upper BR tanks. Now, as a tech tree, is Sweden beginner friendly? I'll start out by saying this. The Swedish have the weirdest tanks in-game. They were primarily designed with defense in mind, which is something that can readily be seen in vehicles like the Stridsvagen 103, and the fact that they have such a large proportion of tank destroyers in their tech tree, especially before 7.0 BR. Ultimately, because of their mainly defensive nature, combined with their odd shapes, playstyle, and largely small upgrades between tanks of increasing BRs at low tiers, I'd say that Sweden is a 5 out of 10 for beginner friendliness. This does not make them bad as they have some of the best tanks in the game in the right hands, especially near top tier, but they can take some getting used to, being that they are just so odd.
Also, there are large gaps in the tech tree in mid-BR, which makes them somewhat difficult to grind at around that stage. And now, for where you should play the Swedish tech tree. These guys are the toughest of all to place in terms of the order in which you should start playing their tech tree. Realistically, I think they are for more advanced players, but once you have the basics down, they can be quite rewarding. This said, for players that are used to War Thunder, I'd say you can play Sweden comfortably as early as your third or fourth tech tree. Otherwise, I'd probably play them after you play some Italians and maybe the French tech tree. And finally, as an addendum, one thing I noticed that I did not do as I reviewed this entire video was go over SPAA for most nations. So I'll do so briefly right now. The US has fairly mediocre SPAA that really just doesn't get good until the M163, with the M19 and M42 being terrible in that role. Those two are, however, okay at destroying tanks if you can flank well enough. Germany has the best SPAA in-game that combines high rate of fire, accuracy, power, and good turret traverse. You can pick almost any German low to mid BR SPAA and be successful with it up until the advent of jets. A few are even good in the anti-tank role. Russia has good SPAA, with the Tunguska being one of the best SPAAs in game. They typically have decent rates of fire, relatively large cannons, and below average surge traverse. Thankfully, they can largely double as anti-tank vehicles, with the ZSU-57 being amazing in that role. Great Britain has likely the second best SPAA in game, with the Falcon being very powerful and the Crusader AA Mark II being able to be used through high BRs. They're kind of like Germany with the SPAA, except better with anti-tank capabilities in lieu of the better German anti-air capabilities. Japan has very few SPAAs, and what it does have really isn't all that good up until the Type 87, although the Soki is fairly good if you don't mind its extremely limited magazine size. China has very good SPAA, owing largely to having the designs of other nations and its tech tree. The ZSD-63, a native design, is quite good, but runs out of ammo quickly and suffers from a very long reload. China's SPAAs are also fairly decent in the anti-tank role. Surprisingly, Italy has among the best SPAA in-game, with one of them, the R3T20, being excellent at anti-air, but more commonly being used to troll people on the ground. Italy, aside from just the R3, has likely the best anti-tank SPAA line in-game, with the automatic being especially fierce. The French probably have the most average SPAA line in the game, with the Roland being incapable of destroying ground units. The other vehicles in the tree can destroy vehicles around their BR in both the air and the ground with decent proficiency. And finally, the Swedish may have the worst SPAA in-game, with their lineup being marked by largely poor turret traverse, mostly poor fire rate, and not great anti-tank capabilities, up until you get around 5.0 BR+, and even then, a few of them can't even attack ground units due to being solely equipped with SAM launchers. That said, thanks so much for watching everyone. If you made it to this point, you're a real champ. Like I said, I put a ton of work into this video as the script for this is many pages long and required the recording of many hours of gameplay. Either way, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. It means the absolute world to me. I hope I could help you guys in deciding which tech tree to look at and which one to choose. Please let me know your opinions in the comments below and really what tech tree you picked. Either way, thanks again everyone. Be excellent to each other and I'll see you all on the other side. Thanks again guys and take care.